going on, family? What's going on? Thank y'all for joining me on another episode of Abandoned Voices. <laughs> joining me today, Mr. Jared Green. <laughs> Young yeah. entrepreneur. I like to call him Mr. Green. <laughs> What's going on, my brother? What's going on? What's going, What's going on, on, man? man? And this oh, young man, man here, man, uh, what's the book called? Uh, There's a Creature in My Belly. There's a Creature in My Belly. Children's book. Children's book, yes, sir. So, man, what's going on with this book, what's man? What's going on with the book? So, <laughs> I actually ended up writing this children's book last June. Um, I was in a very, very tough place. First of all, let me tell you, again, it's called There's a Creature in My Belly. Um, it talks about, or it's metaphoric of the greatness that's on the inside of every single one of us. So I believe that we all have a purpose. Obviously, I believe that we all have a destiny. But I believe that children or babies are natural born geniuses and we hide everything that we need deep within ourselves. Mm -hmm. And so who's better to hide something from you than yourself? And so who's better to find it? Because once you hide it uh, from yourself, only you can find it. So the point is that it's deep within you and it takes you to bring out whatever's in you. And so, uh, with that being said, I ended up writing that at a time in my life where things were just really bad. Um, I've dealt with things for a long time now, but in that moment, I was breaking down. You know, when you get to that point, it's to where it's like, man, point, like, yeah, that breaking point, I, that's exactly where I was. I was I was crying, I was, I was hurt just by a lot of things, and uh, I actually, I, have a, I actually have a son myself, oh, right, right, right. and that situation that. Uh, isn't the best, just like a lot of people's situations, mm -hmm. and I'm working on it, I'm, I'm working on myself, should I say, and that was a part of me working on myself, to be honest with you, I was going through so much, man, I, in my head, I said to myself, if I never get to see him, if I die tomorrow, what will he have for me? That's what really started to break me down even more so. And I said, man, I gotta, I have to give him something. I have to give him what I've learned mm -hmm. over these last eight years or so. Some kind of way. And I began to speak uh, to who I believe in, which is God. And through that, all of a sudden, within a week, I'm sitting down in this apartment. Uh, I just finished watching Lion King, which is my favorite movie. I was born in 1994. Uh, and I, you born in 94? 94, yeah. Right. How old are you? 24. 24. 24 yeah, and the movie came out oh, in 1994. Yeah, you're, you're young, sir. Yeah. <laughs> really young. I know I look, I'm going to show you my face. I know I look uh, 15. <laughs> but I am 24 so, yeah. years old. So you 24 years old, and you dress suit and tie, looking sharp as a tie. Yes, sir. <laughs> man, your, pants, just, your pants not sagging, man? No, pants not, ain't you're sagging. Not, uh, no. <laughs> no, no, no. What's going on, I man? I still have swag, though. This is just my well, swag. Just don't dress like that, no, man. No, this is just... This, <laughs> This is who I that, am. That's I'm coming, coming from the lower ninth ward. I just want to stand out. I want to be who oh I am. God. Tupelo <laughs> Street, across the canal. Yeah, uh, almost you, back in town. If you want to be extremely technical, so you should, you should, you should, you're showing a, another side of young black males. I, I'm showing them another side of the, the ninth ward. Nothing wrong, nothing wrong with that. Because nothing it's nothing like people that. think the ninth ward is one thing, but we have so many different types of people back there and, and people only look at us in one light and so you exactly. only get one thing and if you continue to do the same thing uh, and expect a different result uh, you begin to go insane so I think that the people in the night ward isn't insane I'm beginning to think that everyone outside of the night ward is insane for continuing to look at this beautiful area uh, in such a negative way especially the people that's back there because there's a lot of positive positivity going on back there so but back to that children's book, I said I was watching, I was actually watching Lion King, and there was a scene of the father and the son, where, uh, and I'll be specific, Mufasa was literally teaching Simba how to pounce on Zazu, who was the bird. Mm -hmm. And so Zazu's like, oh no, don't pounce on me, don't pounce on me, but the king's like, you know, just turn around, it'll be okay. Mm -hmm. And so he's showing Simba, he said, get lower, get lower, get lower. And so Simba's getting lowered, and Zazu turns around, and he can't see either one of them. Right. And so... All of a sudden, Zazu turns back around and Simba pounces on him the way that his dad told, told him to do. And so that was really key to me in the way that they were able to depict this relationship with the father and the son, the king and the soon-to-be king, mm -hmm. you know. And so from that, I said, I like how they did that. I want to be able to do something for my son as well. And not only do I want to do that, but I want to feature a young black male and a young black father. A young black son and a young black father. Um, because 
uh, we're not properly represented in, in children's books nationally. And so I wanted to create a new image of who we are, a new image of who fathers are. Because in general, I'm, my situation isn't the best, but this is what I'm doing to work on it. I'm working on it on myself every single day to get to where I need to get to. And how old and so, are you again? Uh, uh, 24 <laughs> years old. Uh, and, 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 I, and, and it's funny you say that. And I ask for everything, every problem I've ever had over the last eight years, since I was 15 years old, I've ended up leaving my house actually when I was 17 years old. I left, uh, moved out of my house, I applied homeless uh, just to get into Dillard University. I ended up sleeping in abandoned houses. I ended up, uh, the list goes on and on. I even slept illegally uh, at Dillard University at one point for an entire summer uh, as I uh, as would leave there to go make money and come back and only being able to sleep. Uh, literally no TV, no cable. Uh, so whatever I ate is what I ate. Uh, with one friend who actually decided, uh, named Roman, who actually decided to uh, do that with me, uh, which let me know that's my brother for life now, mm -hmm. but he didn't have to struggle with me, but he said that uh, I didn't have to struggle by myself, oh, you know, and so... Uh, you don't meet too many people like that. No, you don't meet people like that at all, and so, I, you know, he means a lot to me, and so, uh, in general, though, uh, the struggle was real and I asked for every problem that I have because I wanted to be able to help more people over a longer span of time. I realized that a lot of people don't wake up until they're 30 years old, 35 years old. I couldn't allow that to happen because I realized that if I don't do, if you don't do what you're doing and if I don't do what I have to do, then a lot of people are not going to make it. If you look at the black leaders in this city, we're not properly represented. That's not who we are. That's who they are mm -hmm. individually. And I believe that there is going to be a new rise of young black leaders in many different ways, not just politically, not just in children's books, not just in music, but in many other ways. And we will begin to, to grow and show the world. New Orleans, I believe, will be a pioneer for change all over the entire country. And so that's just how I am. Like I said, I needed to go through what I went through so that I can help the people that I want to help, so that I can almost just relate just a little bit because I realized yeah, you gotta, that when you, you gotta be relatable yeah you have to be relatable and because when you're so talking young, to people 24 24 years old so imagine what I'll be at 34 years old hopefully right. doing so more things for this city hopefully doing more things for my community uh including as I like I said this children's book is just the beginning uh I'm, I'm starting here uh but I'm as I build I mm -hmm. have other things I want to do just for example and we'll get back to the children's book of course but uh, Sunny yeah, with a keep, chance of love. Keep on going yeah, on, man. yeah. Keep Sunny, on going. Sunny with a chance of love is something I want to start. And, Sunny uh, with a chance of love. Sunny with a chance of love. What and so what I want to do that's to help homelessness. As I say, mm -hmm. I've dealt with that before. I'm dealing with it. Uh, I'm gonna be yeah. actually completely open. I look like this, but this is who I am. So you'll never know what I'm going through if you have to base it on what I look like. So I'm dealing with homelessness right. now. You know, even now. And so I continue now to build and grow. And, and homelessness. You have to realize that maybe I'm not on the street, but to have shelter isn't having a home, right? Mm -hmm. And so just because you're sheltered and you have a place where you can sleep, where you can't, where rain can't touch you, or where uh, someone can't necessarily harm you, mm -hmm. doesn't mean that you're not homeless. You are homeless. If you're sleeping on somebody's couch, I'm gonna let you know now <laughs> that you're homeless and you're fighting and you're battling similar things to what they're dealing with. The difference between you and the homeless man on the street is that you decided to get up and do something different or your resources or God or whoever it is that you believe in provided for you to not be in that specific situation. So Sunday with a Chance of Love um, is I want to take buses, right? <laughs> City buses. Let me say this. I pride myself on being able to create innovative not just social, but also economic change as well. So we can parade, we can second line, we can do all of that all day long, but what is it gonna do to actually benefit our community and move us forward? Absolutely nothing. It's gonna, it's, it's, it's going to, and let me not say nothing, it's gonna do something in that moment. Mm -hmm. But everything in life I realize needs balance. So if you're gonna have social, you need economic. We have these social clubs, but they're doing nothing economic. Or they say they're doing economically, but you can't see it. Like you can see the second line coming down the street. And if right. whatever you do economically should be as visible as a second line coming down the street. Oh, man. You and so, and so, knowledge, man. And so, knowledge, man. Uh, I would say that Sunday with a chance of love, like I say, innovative. 
uh, because what I want to do is I want to take uh, retired buses mm -hmm. uh, and turn them into two portable showers. So you split that bus in half. You know how a bus is. Mm -hmm. Front door, back door. The front door is a shower. You run into a wall because the wall splits the middle. The back door is a shower, mm -hmm. right? And so if I can get architects to help me put this together, then I can have people literally, I can bring this sunny with a chance of love on a sunny day around to Claiborne Bridge or around to areas of high homelessness and provide to them the thing of, it's not that we don't have a place where they can go shower, mm -hmm. but they have to go shower. Right. What so will it mean? You know what it meant to, would have meant to me if somebody would have just came to me and said, here, let me help you out. Wow. And said, here, your lunch today. I do that every single day, $5, a dollar. I say here. And I give something out every single day. You know why? Because nobody came up to me and said here. And if somebody had just done that, and I'm trying, I don't want to get emotional now, but if somebody had just done that, Lord knows I probably wouldn't have gone through a lot of things that I was going through, but I had to keep remembering that there was a creature in my belly, that I was destined for something more, for greater than my current circumstance. <clears throat> so I had to go through what I had to go through to write this book. But people out there don't have to go through what they have to do, what they're going through, because they don't have a book. They didn't ask for their problems. Mm -hmm. It was just given to them. Given to them. You know what I'm saying? Like, and so they weren't prepared for that. And so they don't deserve that. They don't deserve for people to keep driving past them they don't i mean we drive down claybone bridge every single day and, it, it, and the numbers are growing and we just look and now they're trying to build things under the claybone bridge or on the Treme area or something like that to where it's going to be all uh, kind of things or oh, there's boots i think they're supposed to be selling things and things yeah, like that and that's everybody. great and all but why can't we build shelter under the bridge and paint the outside of them with all kinds of new orleans artists and give people a place to stay you know what I'm saying? Like, we ain't got to put a whole uh, sink in there, but we can put a, just a, somewhere where you can lock your door and lay down. What's that? If we can build that, we can build that. You know, and so mm -hmm. at the end of the day, if I can bring around a bus and just give them the gift of love and tell them how much I appreciate them, tell them how much I love them, then if that doesn't help only one person a month, I'll take that. If I can, if I can just keep coming, then eventually somebody just like how with pain right i told you i was at a breaking point it had to, it was multiple things that just kept hitting me and hitting me and i like to say i'm like muhammad ali hang on the ropes and i beat him to sleep that's actually a migos line mm -hmm. so i take i could take a lot of licks but they can't and so we literally need to help these people that need this help because a majority of them are our people Exactly. And so a lot of people, and I'm not going to name anybody specifically or a specific race, but there's people out there that's uh, pretending that they need help. When we all know that there are things in place to help others more uh, than to help us. And so uh, I think that if we come together and help ourselves, and when we say help ourselves, it's not me helping me, it's me helping you because I'm black and you black too. So it's like... It's How like old you, you have again? to do that. Uh, 24? 24 years old. Like, so. You talk like you 44, man. Like you've well, been here before. <laughs> I, I feel like I have, to be honest with you. Uh, because I feel like I'm here for a reason. I feel like everything happens for a reason. I was about uh, to ask you. Uh, we can't say that like, when it's convenient like, to us. Like, you here for a reason. Yeah. You gotta, you gotta be a, yeah. a special reason. Yeah. Like, 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 what is your purpose? Like, you think? What is your... Yeah. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Well, you explain your mission. Oh, well, yeah, I kind of, like I said, I can go back to, I can continue, I continue to date things back to when I was 15 years old. I would, I've actually never told this story out loud, so uh -oh. I would actually, uh, exclusive, uh, exclusive, Abandoned exclusive. voices, uh, at first. I would cry at 15 years old. I'm a, uh, and I can't, I mentioned cry about three or four times throughout this conversation. Mm -hmm. I'm not afraid of crying because I realize that in this community as well, we act like something wrong with crying. Young, I'm still a real black did, man. I'm still a realest man out here in my opinion. Crying. I feel like I'm a six foot, seven foot giant, even though I'm five foot, four inches and I could knock anybody out, you know, just like anybody else does. I'm mm -hmm. a man, you're a man. We all bleed the same way. And go. so uh, I would cry to God uh, because Man, she would uh, cry to I, God. I, I felt it though. So at 15 powerful. years old, when I say that, I so powerful. I would cry. Let me actually. Most I said that black wrong. I said that wrong. Word God. Actually, yeah, that. And, <laughs> well, young black man, when I'm getting that. And I realized that I just said that wrong. I didn't cry to God. I cried for God, because I looked at what pastors was doing. I looked at what people were doing. How they would wait until 
something was wrong to say his name or, or, or they wouldn't give him credit when they got all the way to where they got. And I'm like, man, I know you didn't get there by yourself because I'm looking at my life, I'm looking at other people's lives and these testimonies and it seems to me as though, God, why are they doing you this? And I would literally ask him these questions. I ask him this now and I say, and I, the way my relationship with God works is I, I talk to him like, you know, I got you, right? You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, you know you good. Oh man, last, last night they had a lightning show in the sky. I don't know if you was paying attention. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. God was showing up. Y'all think, y'all, yeah, a lot of people was probably scared. I was in there like this, like, oh, keep showing up. Keep showing up. And every time I said that, every time I said that, that he did something and it was in the sky. And when I say that, it's because the relationship that I have with God is genuine. I don't need a thing from him because I know that at the end of the day, if I move my right foot, he gonna move my left foot. If I move my left foot, he gonna move my right foot. We are an unbreakable team. Like we are a bond. That's my boy. That's that's my that's my dog. You know what I'm saying? I'ma say it like that. Like you know what I'm saying? Like. And how old are you? Again? And I'm 24 years old. <laughs> <laughs> and so, like I said, I was I was crying at 15 years old. And so uh, I feel I know I think he heard me. You know, and because I didn't have a purpose, and I felt like my siblings. Uh, they knew what they wanted to do. Like my siblings, like I have a brother, Jalil, Jalil Green. I'm shouting you out. Uh, he's a amazing dancer and an amazing singer and an actor. Hey, he could do it all. I'm you telling said, you right you now. Younger brother, older brother. My younger brother. younger brother. My older brother too, though. He can sing. He can dance. He can. Man, this dude is a model. Like you've never seen. My sister, she loves to do hair and she's very fashion, very uh, into fashion. And what's your sister's, uh, sister's, and, sister's uh, name? My sister's name is Renee Augustus, and my older brother name is Jerome Green. Uh, my mom even, you look at my mom, she has two degrees from Loyola. My dad loves to be a, he's a police officer, uh, but he's owned two businesses before, you know, uh, you know, I believe he's working on some things as well now. And uh, I just love them so much and I, and I realized, and I, and I was praying then, I, I was, before then, I prayed to God, why they doing you this? I realized I was being selfish because God had given me something before that. I realized I was asking for something. I didn't know what my purpose was and I would get laughed at because at the time I thought my purpose was play basketball that's what I would do every single day hot sun 12 o'clock until at least 7 o'clock every day and uh, I, yeah basketball that's all I did and uh, but I was always a different kind of child I read books on philosophers Al Thomas Edison uh, uh, Albert Einstein uh, uh, many 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 of those people many 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 of my people too uh, I can go down the list of people and actually, I'm going to keep it honest with you, too. Even at that time, I wasn't as in tune to my race. Uh, it wasn't until I got older to where I started reading books on Frederick Douglass and Harriet Tubman and Rosa Parks. And, you know, those are more the general names that people know. I don't want to name the names that people may not be as familiar with, but names that people were familiar with. And my thing wasn't what they did, but why they did, how they did, and how they do it. What can I do differently from what they did so I don't make the same mistakes that they did? Uh, so a lot of people look to see what they did. I look to see what they didn't do, you know, and so, um, yeah, so like, I would be crying uh, for him, and I made it my mission, I told God that if he would put me in high places, that I would never forget him, if he would bless me with money, then I would always bless others, and I think that my purpose is to be a blessing unto others for my entire life, mm -hmm. um, through different ways, and so if I am become wealthy, uh, I will bless people through that way. If I run for an office, I will bless people through that way. If I write this children's book, I will bless people through that way. way. Everything that I do is to be a blessing unto others. And because of that, I continue to be blessed. And so as I deal with what I deal with, I actually deal with nothing at all. I don't have issues. I don't have problems. You may look into whatever you want to look into and say, well, I see you have issues. You see I have issues. But God said... <laughs> right, right, right. You can't argue with that. He said, I'm good. So what you going to tell me if the most powerful man that ever existed or the powerful being that ever existed, if he is who he is, then I am who I am. And if you're so perfect and I'm not, then why isn't he using you? Ask the question. Man, I don't know what else to ask you. <laughs> <laughs> How old are you again? 24? <laughs> man, like, you, you really, you know... Just and for everybody, this is my first time meeting meet this guy. Yeah, we talked on the line a few times, but this is my first ever actual encounter. So I wasn't expecting this. You know, but off I always saw you get pictures of your hair that's you no know, yeah. suit and tie on. Yeah. So I I knew how he was coming. Yeah. I hate him time. You know, and I 
that's why one of the reasons I reached out to you. Yeah. I just saw from your pictures and things I read, I'm like, he's different. Yeah. You know. Yeah. I did know you're 24. I'll never right. guess that. Right. I mean, you look like you know about 20. Yeah. You know, but <laughs> just me reading and, and watching you know watching your videos, you spoke like you was like you older than what you was. Yeah. You know. That's just blessed. This is everybody speaks the so, same way in their so, own way. This is just a off topic question. So we, when you run your peers, your you know, night yeah. walk peers and twenty four year olds, yeah. how they look at you? I'm thirty six, I'm an old man. They look at me uh, as being old. But how do you look at you? They look at you like I feel like I'm a weirdo. Uh, that's what I'm getting at. Yeah. You know? But it's okay because I like to be weird because I don't wanna be yeah, but successful the same. And, and successful people but usually the weirdos. Yeah, but then you also it's not realize really weirdos, that it's different. It's most, different. It's most different. people they don't understand and say call it. You know they. they but I want to call it, a, and I call it a weirdo because I want people to relate to every. I, I calculate almost everything that I say, and so when I say the word weirdo, of course there's a many uh, different words. Uh, exactly. It, it all means weirdo. It, it, it all means it, weirdo, but most people will relate to the word weirdo, and I think that, and honestly, I don't have many friends uh, because I realize that uh, most people are not. Uh, Good people. Most people are just well behaved. And most people are not good people. Most people are just well behaved. Yeah. And so they act good. And so people are really good actors. And yeah. so, uh, or or Maya Angelou says, when people show you who they are, believe believe them. And not just believe them, but believe them the first time. A lot of us don't believe them the first sure. time because we want to believe what we want to believe. Exactly. And so I realized that uh, through that and through my experiences. I realized that the only reason why a lot of us remain hurt by people is because we give people too much authority in our life, which is should be ran like a business. Uh, I believe that your life should be ran like a company, uh, and that you have assignments that's given to people. Different people have different positions. Different people have certain powers in your life. I think you should give responsibility to people in your life uh, to see where uh, they are uh, actually. Because in general, like you tell me, I may not need a ride, but I'll say, can you come pick me up at 1 o'clock? Well, if you don't come to 1.30, well, there I, you, go. <laughs> you told me something there. It's not that you're a bad person, person. but person. I know I'm teaching you how to treat me. I didn't teach you that. So you treat me how you want to treat me, so I have to react accordingly. You teach me how to treat you, and I teach you how to treat me. And so if you can't respect that, then... You're a good person, and I hope God blesses you. But at the end of the day, I have to do what's best for me and continue to move on for myself to get to where it is that I have to go. Because, again, if I don't do what I have to do, a lot of people won't make it. And that's not me. That's mm -hmm. you and everyone else. Because we all have a creature inside of our belly, and it is our responsibility to ourselves and to this universe to figure out what that is. And if you don't, you fail God. You fail yourself. You fail everything. It doesn't matter when or what you did in this life. If you did not do your purpose and what you're supposed to do, you did nothing at all. So you in, you in school right now or anything? I actually failed out of college. I had a 1.4 GPA. Flunked out around the time I was having my son. Mm -hmm. I couldn't afford school. I said I told you I applied homeless just to get into school. And I'm going to shout out Dr. Toya Barnes Teamer. Uh, Toya Barnes Toya, Toya, Dr. Toya Barnes Teamer. And Ty too as well. Ty owns Spotlight Dance Studio. Mm -hmm. uh, that's my girl. Not my girlfriend, but my yeah. my girl. That's yeah, my girl. You gotta be specific these days. You gotta be specific. And it's New Orleans, so if it's somebody from yeah. not yeah. from New Orleans sees this, then like yeah. this girl, I know that's my girl. Like yeah, she's that, dope. That, like that, that song's about to come back on uh, ten years from now. <laughs> yeah, right, right, right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Jack Green and Ty Teamer. But no, she's dope. She has a dance studio. She does everything that is dance. You're probably gonna see her name on it. Especially if not now, within two years from now. Uh, but uh, uh, Dr. Toya Bond Seymour is her mom. And when she saw me at Dillard University, I was, by my, was actually not by myself. I was with, at the time, my best friend, uh, who, I, who someone I considered the best friend. And uh, I was in there with my pants, a little sagging, and you know, I had my t-shirt on, and I'm just chilling. I knew who I was now, but just like a chameleon, I tend to blend in. When you're trying to survive, and that's what we have to realize about a lot of young black males. A lot of young black males, and I can say this from my perspective, that is not who they are. Just like we know that that's not who they are. Mm -hmm. But they're trying to survive. Mm -hmm. So most of us as black people, I believe that we have the ability to blend in. So mm -hmm. we will blend in to wherever we got to blend in at to survive. to survive. Just like roaches. We don't die. We just multiply. So at the end of the day, uh, uh, I was blending in, and I forgot who I was. 
it's so it's, it's easy to do that because once you're trying to be somebody or do this to fit in and to survive you can forget who you were and so it wasn't until and i'll get into those experiences in our next interview uh i went through a certain thing and so i started beginning to realize i i'm tripping i I'm, i need to wake up mm -hmm. and so um and, and that and exactly what i did but in general um uh, I was going into uh, Dr. Toya Barnes' team, and she saw me there, and there was hundreds of students there, man, and she walked up to me, she must have saw me pass her as I was walking or something, and she would have to say that exactly, specifically what it was, but I went and sat down, and she went and came next to me, she just crouched down by me, and she yanked on my shirt, and she just, why are your pants like that? <laughs> and I said, um, honestly, I said, well, I just don't have a belt on. You know, you get kind of like, uh, uh, you know. Uh, Somebody put you in the spot. Right, don't put you on the spot. And I'm, like, I'm trying to get into school. And I'm just like, I don't know who she is. And, and so I'm, my best friend just starts to laugh. And I'm just like, oh. So I'm just, did she know you before that? No, she didn't know exactly. You know, something, something had to lead her to me. That's what I'm saying. Uh, so. And so, uh, and, and keep in mind, I'm applying homeless. And so I'm in there. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just there. I'm trying to. And they had already told me. Let me tell you this. I had went into one line. They said I, I didn't have no money. They said I didn't have money to be in school. I didn't, my funds didn't cover it. And not only could I be in school, but I needed an apartment. There was no money. They said there was no money available to allow me to have a play out in the apartment on campus. There was nothing available. And I said, man. Man, I don't know what to do, but this is it for me. You know, like, if this don't happen, I'm going to the Covenant House. And I didn't want to do that. I felt like that's not where I was supposed to be. I knew that something was supposed to happen there, and I, I didn't know what. And so I was just like, okay, God, well, I guess that's it for me. I'm, I'm out of here. You know, and so, uh, I, but ended up, I guess, walking, I guess, before, as I was saying, I guess I just sat down. And she came up to me, and she says, I'm on my pants. She said, who are you here with? What are you here for? And I said, well, I'm here by myself. Well, I guess technically not by myself. I'm here with him. I said, well, he's the only one here with me. And I'm trying to get into school. I just, I said, I feel like I need to be in school. I need to be in college. And she said, what? Where's your parents? I said, uh, nah, my, my mom and dad are still here. They're both married. They're still together. But as a 17-year-old man, I did what I felt like I had to do. And, and it wasn't good. We weren't, we weren't touching in the green. Let's just say that. And I said, I don't have parents. That's exactly what I said. I don't have parents. I'm here by myself. Be rebellious, because huh? I have to be because if you tell somebody that's oh maybe you should go do this, people will always tell you what they think you should do. Only you know, just like I said, only you know your vision. Exactly. Only you can hear it. So if I tell her that they're at home, she gonna say, I'm gonna bring you home. I couldn't tell her they're at home. I said, I don't have parents. I said, I need help getting into school. And they said I don't have no money for that. And I don't even know what to do. And she said, give me one second. She went to one of the booths because at the time it wasn't set up the way it's set up now. I think it was uh, it was 2012, so uh, they still had everything in the gym. It was booth set up throughout the gym. She went to the first booth. She talked to the guy. She skipped me through the line. I sat down, talked to the guy. All of a sudden, I was into school. School was paid. For. Wow. They found money. I don't know. The money they didn't have. The money they didn't have, they, <laughs> they found the money. Oh. And then all of a sudden, I went to the next step, and I went to the next step, and I went to the <laughs> Exactly. I went to the next step. The politics that people hate, the politics that people tarnished, and, and, and now people don't understand what politics really is because it has such negative connotations along with just that word. You can't get past the word to see what the individual is supposed to do. But in general, we get to the next step, and the next step, and the next step. And then all of a sudden, we work our way down to... Uh, she had surpassed me with some things for financial aid or whatever those first steps were mm -hmm. uh, because then the last step was actually not only did they not say they didn't have the money they said they didn't have any rooms available that's what it was now, I'm not going to drop his name because it's funny because he's actually a very prominent man and when I say prominent the person who was over this uh, at that time uh, now does something uh, with a, a, a nice uh organization now mm -hmm. and I ended up going back to him later on in life and actually he gave me a place to stay later wow. on in life outside of Dillard though and wow. it's funny how that came back and worked out now that I'm actually thinking about it and saying it to you but he's the one that said that it wasn't available we had nothing available she walked up to him talked to him and all of a sudden I had the keys to 3630 in the gardens wow she said here you go uh, 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 she came up to me basically she said here you go she came up to me and said 
uh, go up to him and he has your keys. And so I go up to him mm -hmm. and lo and behold, he had my keys. And me and my friend, we go into my apartment and we in there cheering. We like, oh, we got it. I got. I finally got the keys in my own spot. And <laughs> you know, I'm excited and I'm like, oh man. And then from there on, the story continues. And uh, uh, like I said, I'll definitely be able to cover that uh, in, in, in the near future. But literally, God, I put my left foot forward and God went ahead and, and moved my right, right foot. foot. And as I extended my hand toward the sky, God extended somebody else's hand toward me. And so it's like a, it's constant movement and constant motions. You have to consistently be moving in order for this thing to work. And I think that that's what people miss it. You know what I'm saying? Like people start it and they give up. No, right, you right. have to keep, keep going. Moving, you have right. to keep going. There's no finish line. <laughs> what is the only see. difference? The best advice that comes from James Gray ever gave me was comes from who? James, James Gray. Gray. Yeah. Uh, actually, Cindy Wynn, who you interviewed, actually just uh, oh, okay. took his spot over. Let me say one his spot, fair and square. Um, but the best advice that he ever gave me was, or the best words, some of the best words was, the only difference between me and a homeless man on the street is that I kept going. Kept going. You know what I'm saying? Like, he's, I just kept doing it. Like, this is a man that's fought in the Vietnam War. This is a man that has uh, been a lawyer during the civil rights uh, movement and era. Mm -hmm. uh, so he's seen it. He's done it, you know, and he's like, the only difference between you and me or me and them is that I've decided to continue moving and to keep going. And so uh, that's all I can continue to do is continue to believe based on what I've been through and based on what I saw. I don't even judge you. You know, I don't believe that you have to believe in anything. You can be an atheist and I can I believe that we can agree in the moral principles of love and servitude because that's what's taught across all religions. And an atheist even understands those moral concepts. So my question is, if we can't stand on that platform alone together, why not? That's my question. And how old are you again? Uh, 24? 24 years. Yeah, it's 24 years old. 24 years old. <laughs> so, so 24 now. Yeah. What do you see yourself at 30? I, I, I ain't gonna say 10 years from now, cause at 24, man, you sound like you like you on your way to the top. And I feel honored to have this conversation with you oh, I'm, I'm at, 20, to be. at 24. Yeah. You know, <laughs> appreciate you taking your time out your out your busy schedule to come on up and the voices, you know, this yeah. little contraption I got I got I put together. Yeah, you know, I love it, man. It's not, it's so not, awesome. It's not as big as yeah, everybody else, but you know, no, but it will I'm be. trying. It will you know, be. Trying. It will be. But at least man. by the time I'm 30, I believe that you'll still be doing this. If not, it's on a bigger scale. So I'm probably gonna try to put you on TV. And so, like, uh, it's a, like you speak so like. <laughs> It's mind blowing, man. Yeah. It's 24. Um, and, and, and I don't know. I'm guess, not trying to. I'm, I appreciate it, but I'm just like in my head. It's just like, yeah, uh, it's natural. And actually, it's it's natural. Just so you said, I like to say when you when some of you said that was so real. Most black men don't wake up to about 30. I'm 20. I'm I'm 36. Mm -hmm. I didn't really find myself and slow down in life until my dad died uh, when I was 23. My dad told me a lot of important stuff about life, but I didn't hear it until he died. Yeah. Once he died, everything he told me, it started coming to me like, Isn't oh, that wow, crazy? wow, we wow. Don't hear like things. when he was alive, I'm like, all right, dad. You know, I wasn't, I never was a bad kid. I never been in jail. I don't smoke. Right. I never smoked weed day in my life. Well, I tried weed one time, didn't like it. Right. I don't drink. I used to drink like, like a fish. Right. I don't I drink in, in years. Like a fish, so, um, that metaphor, that means you were soaking in the water. Yeah, I had to drink everything, <laughs> but I don't drink. I don't smoke. I don't do drugs, yeah. that type of stuff. But, when my dad died, that's when I started hearing his voice. Yeah. When he's alive, I heard it, but it's, you know how it is, it's just different, you know? Right. And I, you say, well, cut you off, but you say you get older, that's almost true because at between 29 to about 31, mm -hmm. when I realized, like, you know, I got two sons, yeah. you know, a daughter, like what I'm doing. And I would say that's probably because you know around 12 or 15 <laughs> years old, you probably had something that changed your mind. You probably knew what it was around that age because we tend to know that before 13, but when 13 comes, all of a sudden things change based on what you see. And so you probably knew what you wanted to do, if not specifically this, at 13 years old. And I, I can relate to that, uh, that, that, that night hearing people. And I, my example to that is I had a girl named Allie, uh, uh, who I really, really did fall for. 
and she didn't hurt me at all. I was going through so much. I had already had my son. I was dealing with things with the mother, my child, and, and all kind of stuff. And she was in my life actually making it better. And we were arguing one day, and I used to talk more than I listened. And so that's when I learned. This is how I learned this. Uh, mm -hmm. I listen more than I speak now because she was telling me things and she said and we was going back and forth in the car like how me and you are in the car now and she said you know what man you don't listen you don't listen you don't listen uh, you won't hear me until I'm long gone and yeah, I never thought after that that we would end up leaving each other or anything like that but we ended up stopped talking and I didn't hear what she said until this time last year that was in 2014 and I found something else made me realize it because I was like no I'm not listening I gotta listen and that's when I realized I said and it just hit me like a ton of bridges just all came back to me that whole thing mm -hmm. and this is specifically what she said you won't hear me until I'm long gone and I'm just like man she is long gone mm -hmm. and so and you asked me what where I see myself at is old I can tell my visions and my dreams I can say what I think but they say if you want to make God laugh, tell them your plans. And if you want to make God laugh, tell, tell them your, your plans. plans. And <laughs> at the end of the day, I realized that you say, I'll tell you I'm doing the children's book because there's nothing nobody out there can do to stop me. Mm -hmm. And But what I won't do is set myself up and release things out there because I realized that people will attack certain things. They will pray directly against what you're doing because they don't like the fact that I'm this young or you at your age that you are or that you're doing what it is that you're mm -hmm. doing. And so in general you're I don't black male so you know and so I don't need anything attacking anything that I'm trying to do. Just know that everything that I do will benefit my people. At the end of the day, no matter what I do, understand that it will be to benefit my people. And I would say that also I found that when you tend to look around the corner you always stop moving. Mm -hmm. Your feet stop moving because you're trying to look and you're so busy trying to see what's around the corner When you actually Contradicting the very thing that you believe in because if you believe in God then you shouldn't have to look around the corner right. Because there's nothing there should be danger. There should only be the next step There should only be the next level and so from what I believe in I can have list I have hundreds of things to be honest mm -hmm. with you where I can possibly be doing my 30 I have about 900 notes. I do not always exaggerate. To give you exact, I have 868 notes in my phone. I just took 300 out six months ago. And so right. now I have to go take them back out again and, and do things with those. But yes, yeah, business but it's, man continu is. it's continuously it's thought. It, it, it's, it's learning yourself though. It's learning who you are. It's learning what makes you tick. It's learning which, and I, and I got back to this point because I lost myself. Like I told you, I had to go take myself out to eat myself by myself but you're never by yourself you have angels that's protecting you that's sitting down with you you know what i'm saying like if it's not god himself it's an angel sitting there talking with you because i believe and this is just my thoughts and my opinions that we all have past archangels so whether that that have done things on this world so somebody that is influencing you to do what you're doing mm -hmm. and for me i'll use an example say my archangel is martin luther king i'm learning from his mistakes I'm learning from what he's done. Mm -hmm. I'm looking at what he did. How can I modernize it? How can I touch people? What did he do? And these people that have been here before continue to guide us along the path that we are supposed to go to. So some people say your angels are this person and that person. I say that your angels are people that are fighting the same fight that you're fighting, right, exactly. which is to find out who they are and who their purpose is. Because if you don't, you fail that life. You don't have to be wealthy. You don't have to be rich. Success is whatever you make it. So, but you'll only be happy when you find out who you are. You'll never be happy until then. You'll never be happy working a job. It'll never work out. But what will work out is when you become in tune with yourself, yourself and do yeah. something for yourself. Make yourself an owner. Own yeah. something. I, I, I call it taking the mask off. I took my mask off. I ain't talking about the song. I took my mask off when I was, like I said, 30 years old. And I, and I mean by that is pretending to be somebody who I wasn't right but see now I can at one point in time I was kind of ashamed to tell not ashamed but crazy to tell people I don't drink right. I, I felt right it's I felt, felt, felt corny it felt I, you don't drink. I was ashamed to tell people <laughs> hey I love God and because they got yeah, real love dudes God. and it's just be like but you gonna respect me though 
Exactly. You know what I'm saying? Like <laughs> I respect you and, and, and you you doing what you do. Mm-hmm. And it's, and it's and it goes back to when people ask me about my suit. Why you got that on? Well, nobody, nobody, why you, why nobody you don't asks anybody on? else. Not, not even know why you don't. I exactly. don't care what you got yeah, on. Exactly. At the end of the day, nobody, nobody asks you why you got on what you got on. So why am I getting questioned? Exactly. You because there's dudes walking around in purses and 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 oh, let me say bags, man, bags. Uh, there's purses. dudes walking around in purses <laughs> and, and, and ankle bracelets. <laughs> And, and and it's people that's not questioning them dudes, and they're just like, oh, you know, that's just high end. Right. Well, I walk around in a suit, and people <laughs> just I get questioned <laughs> all day long, and, and let me let people know this: suits don't uh, don't cost that much. Go to H and M and get you a suit for one hundred and fifty dollars. That's where mine's come from. Damn. I'm not ashamed of it. One day my suit will cost a thousand dollars, but for now, we're gonna get what I can afford. But tell you the truth, it's not about the suit; it's about the man right. in the suit. And this young, how old are you again? Uh, 24, 24 years, old. years old. And just like the church, and that's why people run away from the church. I'm just real. I'm not a pastor. I'm not none of that. But I'm just real. And I realize why people don't go back. Because people put so much into the church building and the churches in your heart. And the church is constantly recycling information within that building. And then not getting out to the people that needs to be touched. The people that actually needs the help. Y'all helping each other over and over again. And I always go back to Albert Einstein's definition of insanity. Doing the same thing over and over again expecting a different result which is why the church is failing and which is why they're getting torn down and more and more people over 60 percent of millennials don't even go to church no more and our grandparents went to church every sunday half of us if you put on a praise song right now by kirk franklin we know it and we will dance to it and we will sing it but the minute we actually you ask them to go to church <clears throat> nah, they just want my money the church has really tainted things but i need people to understand that i'm here to change some things you know i'm not a pastor i'm not those things but understand i believe i don't go to church every week i read but i don't read every day mm-hmm. you know what i'm saying it's a working process progress and i'm working on myself is it your birthday is your birthday yeah happy birthday man let me I give you some hey. no man I didn't. Happy birthday, happy birthday. But in general, that's just it's not right, man, and it's not fair. That was and a dollar for the day, huh? That, that was I don't know how many dollars that was, but <laughs> I just felt led to do it. So that ruined but, that. Uh, that ruined that. Yeah, that's just how I feel. So definitely man. I definitely appreciate this man. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> definitely man. I appreciate this man and I appreciate you taking time out your super business schedule. You got you just told me you got nine hundred notes, that I mean you got nine hundred to do. Yeah.